Hello friends, neighbors, John your Whiskey Neighbor here. Welcome to Allen Knock. I'm happy Saturday. Uh, today I'm going to shoot a Speyside Scotch uh, before the bottle's gone. This is a very humble Scotch. It's a 40 percenter. It's got all the wrong things, colored, chill filtered, so keep your expectations where they should be. But Tam Nivolin showed up on my market about a year ago or more and it is very, very affordable. So I did buy this bottle about a year ago and uh, I've been hoping it would speak to me, give me some flavors to talk about. So if you have Tam Nivolin, now this is the red wine cask finish and in my market that means it's German Pinot Noir finish. I know there's a Cab Sav out there and that's probably more popular, but for me this is the German Pinot Noir red wine cask from Tam Nivolin. So if you have any Tam Nivolin, why don't you pour a little bit, if not any uh, wine influenced scotch might be a good idea and when you come back we'll share some thoughts on this Space Side Scotch. Three, four. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining me. Uh, as I said in the opener, you know, this bottle's been around for a little while. And I don't know enough about Tam Nivolin, but this one, um, I mean, the distillery, I know it closed for a while. I think it came back in 2007. I believe it's operated by White and Mackay and has, you know, most of its workhorse has been going into blends. This particular Tam Nivolin is uh, a 40 percenter, as I said, it's aged in ex bourbon and then finished in red wine casts. And this one is in German Pinot Noir cast. So uh, I don't know, I have, this is the only Tam Nivolin single malt scotch that I've had. Um, and I don't know enough about their process or, or even the people involved behind it, except for what I just shared with you. It's pretty humble. 40% as I said, uh, colored, chill filtered, uh, and the things we really don't appreciate in the scotch, but let's see what that finish does to a, a no age stamp, must be pretty young, single malt. You know, the nose on this is not bad. It's, it's quite uh, light fruit, berry forward. I get like, you know, maybe light cherry, but more like raspberry type. Yeah, I would say definitely a little bit of jam because it's sweetness and sugars in there, but I would say a kind of a berry, well, yeah, just that, a light berry nose. There are some vanillas, there's not a lot of, you know, butterscotch or caramels going on. I'm not getting some oaks and spicing is like, it's just light, fruity. That's not that bad. Maybe a little bit of orchard fruits in there too. Okay, let's try this one on the palate. Sancha. It's light in the palate as well. Thankfully, a little more malt comes in, a little some malt sugars and a little bit of breads in there, a little bit of other things. Light, light baking spices. Not really spicy, but a little bit going on. Another sip, we'll talk finish. Just say again in the palate, it's not offensive, but it also doesn't coat well. It's kind of forgettable in the palate. It's kind of splashy. The finish is a little bit tannic. Like uh, in this, it reminds me of I'm eating grapes and I've chewed on the grape stems a little bit. Like it's, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit bitter, a little bit tannic, not off putting, but somewhere in the finish it does bring a lot of oak to the conversation. Although I guess that's a woody note that I mentioned the grape stems, but like it doesn't have a, a lot of oak backbone again, no real uh, caramels from the ex bourbons going on and the malt is it's there a little bit but light you know uh you can tell that i'm not in love with this malt by any means and i really gave it a fair shot I, it's actually tasting a bit better today i haven't had it in quite a while um than my memory and, and maybe that's because it's been sitting in this uh well opened bottle for for some time and no doubt there's been quite a bit of oxidation. So it took away some of the bitterness that I was getting, perhaps. Um, it just didn't capture my interest. It just remains too light and splashy. Nose is not bad and that's the strength of it for me, but it doesn't follow through. It just doesn't deliver the flavors that the nose is promising and it doesn't back it up in a way that says, mm, I'd like another sip. 
kind of just goes away. It's not bad. It gets off the floor maybe, maybe at three and a quarter. It's pushing three. Uh, it's just it's just not my favorite malt. Now, now, is it good enough for me to try another release of theirs? Perhaps, because it's priced very, very well. But this one, I just didn't really like. When I went to the shelves to look for another X wine, single malt or, or malt, I couldn't find any and I was surprised. I usually have a couple of them around. I didn't even have a little bit of the Spaniard left. I'm not quite sure when I finished that one off, but I didn't have a direct comparison. So I thought what I would do is shoot one that is heavily influenced, and this is sherry influence, and plays in that affordability. In my market, these are 45 to 65, depends on, on where you get them. I'm a bargain hunter, so I got around 45, but this is Berry Brothers and Rudd. Now this is a blended malt. Uh, if you haven't heard me talk about it before, you know Berry Brothers and Rudd are a wine merchant in London. They purchase stocks, then they age them, or they recast them, or they do all kinds of stuff on their own stocks. This is their sherry casks, just a blend, but it is a blend of malts. So it's only malts in here. It is stronger at 44.2, percent So, you know, it's significantly stronger than 40, and this is all sherry, it's not red wine. So. Really, I hope it's a different experience, but they're both around the same price. Let's see what Berry Brothers gives us today, nose and taste. This is a darker experience. These fruits are leathered, dried, pruned. Well, it's not quite pruned, but you know what I mean? Like it's got that, that older cherry or dried fruit compote or something that's, that's just stewed down. In comparison, Oh, that's interesting. Coming back, I was going to say lighter, brighter fruits, and it is, but coming back, I am getting a little bit more malt and a little bit more vanilla and some of the, some of the ex bourbon. Yeah. So in comparison, the fruit even backs away. It's just kind of a sweet, light malt. This one stays dark and heavy on the nose. Let's try it on the palate. Sancha. This is a significantly richer, a little more coating, but certainly more flavor, but darker flavor. You'd add a little bit of espresso, bitter chocolates. I could even get some nuts in there. It, it, it is, it is, uh, an, it's not older. They're both non age stamp, but, but it just gives that impression of thicker leathered, older present, musty wood, that kind of thing. And the finish lingers, the finish lingers, but can play into a little bit of bitterness, whereas this doesn't have that. So this wouldn't put many people off. It's, I just don't think it's going to interest many people. This I like, I like the richness. I like the darkness. I like the interplay of, of dried up older fruits with some malt, with some chocolate and a bit of bitterness or bitter espresso, but not in a bad way. That said, last time I talked about Berry Brothers and Rudd, a number of people tuned in and said, hey, John, I get sulfur on that. I get a lot of sulfur on that. And one viewer said it was so bad I couldn't even finish it. Made me think, I've been talking with Vin PF and a few others, and I realized I must not be as sensitive to sulfur as others. For me, I get the darker fruit. I get, as I'm saying, for me, a light bitterness. I get some of those things that I could say, okay, I, I could get into a matchstick, never as far as a rotten egg, but I must not be as sensitive or as put off by a little bit of that sulfur impression. Enough viewers have said that it's in here. So be cautioned. For me though, this is like, okay, maybe three and a quarter. This is easily three and three quarter. This is a good dram. And in my market, they play in the same value. I mean, the same price range. I can't see this hitting my shelf again. And this one will be on my shelf again. It's just so rich and so dark flavored. I like it. Very different malts. Wish I had a better wine finish to compare it to, to try to say like, what could you have with that nice nose expression, but something carried through in the palate. It's all I had. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you guys are having a, had a good week and are having a good Saturday. 
time goes well, I'll try to get to some samples yet tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. You guys take care. Thank you.